I'm Alison Beer of alisonbeer.com and welcome to yet another Q&A Saturday. My question today is about perspective, specifically one-point perspective. And the question is, how do I even know to use one-point perspective and not some other kind of perspective? And then, how do I get started? This is a great question, so let's dive right in and take a look. So this is the picture we're using to show us how you can get into a pickle with one-point perspective. And the question is, does this need one-point perspective? And how do we even start to decide whether we do need it or not? The dead giveaway with one-point perspective is the fact that you've got a large expanse of wall that you're face onto in this picture. If you're face onto a wall like this, it's immediately going to be one-point perspective to draw this building. Whereas if you were looking at the corner of the building here, and the walls were running away from us in two different directions, that would require two-point perspective. But this is definitely, definitely one point. So the first thing you always need with perspective is a vanishing point. And I want to have mine pretty much in the middle of the page, but on the horizon line, as one does. So I've chosen to put my horizon line here, on the top third line of the page, and here's how I'm finding the middle of the page. If I go from corner, to diagonal corner like this, and the other side, corner to corner, I get this crisscross. This is the very center of the page. Then if I go vertically upwards to the horizon line, that's where I'm going to put my vanishing point. I also want a ground line to show where the bottom of the castle is. So here it is. And then I want to put a street with curbstones just to emphasize the perspective so I'm putting that in as well. Now I've gone ahead and actually drawn the castle ramparts in and the road and the, and the verticals of the curbstones because that's a bit time consuming and what I really want to show you is the joining to the vanishing point which is so important. So to get the one point perspective working what we need to do is take each of these the top of, of the ramparts and join it down to the vertical uh, from the ver top of the vertical down to the vanishing point like this. Then we need this one as well coming across like that and this one coming across like that and you can already see how this will start to show us where the ramparts are. Similarly with the verticals of our curb stones if we join each one to the vanishing point we'll get that sense of where the curb stones lines must fall across the path. So I'm joining the top of each curbstone vertical to the vanishing point. And once I've done that, you'll be able to see quite clearly how the curbstones across the street are going to work, or the pavement I guess it is, isn't it? So you can see these lines running across the pavement, which give us a sense of, of where the paving lay, lies. And then, of course, here at the back, we're going to see part of the ramparts here. So what we need to do is fill in the vertical for the back of the ramparts. And we can do it easily now because we can see where the line drops to go to the vanishing point. So if we go like that and then just join up here. Of course, all these lines now look a bit like a spider's web, so we'll just go and erase everything that we don't need, just leaving the lines which actually join to the vanishing point and define something that we need. So I'm being a bit precious here. Actually, I can just take out all these vanishing point lines because we've filled in what we need to so far. Now we'll tidy up those ramparts a little bit on the side of the building, erase some of the extra lines I put in that I didn't need, join up the top of the side rampart, make sure it joins to the vanishing point, Raise the last bit. And now we can show the shadow on the edge of the ramparts, which gives us that sense of depth. In fact, the whole side of the building here would really be in shadow. Of course, I did forget to fill in the black on the curbstone, so I'm going to do that now, just covering over the red to give our curbstones more of a streety feel instead of painting the town red. And then, of course, we can pop our character in on top of that 
So here comes our character marching along the street, heading to the castle. And it's time to just tidy up a little bit that side edge of the castle, drawing down the all the way to the ground line, bringing down the edge, finishing off that shading. And there is our castle scene. As you can see from where we started, it's easy to get into quite a pickle around one point perspective. But at the same time, with a few principles, it's just as easy to get yourself out again. I'd encourage you to go back, take another look at the video, and then put pencil to paper and give it a try for yourself. Using perspective, even very, very simply, can make such a difference to how your work looks. Thank you so much for watching Q&A Saturday. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to my channel there. And of course, I would love it if you shared it with all of your friends. And to get even more tips that I only share on email, head on over to my website, www.alisonbeer.com and sign up there for email updates. Stay on your game, keep drawing, and you will get better one tiny step at a time. Thanks and I'll see you next time on Q&A Saturday.